You're listening to episode number one of the Transform Your Life from the Inside Out podcast. Whatever you do, listen to this entire episode because you're going to discover why you've worked really hard, put in all the effort, all the hours, the blood, sweat, and tears, and the goal setting, and all the things that you've tried to do to improve your life, but you're still not getting the results that you want. The reason, hint, that you're not getting the results that you want is because if you're like most people, you are working backwards. You're working from the outside in instead of the inside out. Keep listening and you're going to discover exactly how and who you have to be to create the results that you want. Hi, I'm Jim Fortin and you're about to start transforming your life from the inside out with this podcast. I'm widely considered the leader in subconscious transformation, and I've coached super achievers all around the world for over 25 years. Here, you're going to find no rah-rah motivation and no hype, because this podcast is a combination of brain science, transformational psychology, and ancient wisdom all rolled into one to take your life to levels you've never thought possible. If you're wanting a lot more in life, to feel better, to heal, to have peace of mind, to feel powerful and alive, and to bring more abundance and prosperity into your life, then this podcast is for you because you're going to start learning how to master your mind and evolve your consciousness. And when you do that, anything you want then becomes possible for you. I'm glad you're here. Okay, so this is obviously the Transform Your Life from the Inside Out podcast. So the place that I want to start quite literally is what is transformation? You know, you see all the motivational speakers and you probably are like a lot of people. You probably have, you know, read a lot of books, been to a lot of seminars and webinars and online training and YouTube videos, but you're still not getting the results that you want. The reason why is that most people, they work backwards when they're wanting to create change in their life. So most people work from what I call more, better, different. They want a little more, a little better, and a little different. The definition of transformation is a thorough or dramatic change in form or appearance. But yet this rarely happens with people. And again, the reason that it rarely happens is because people do not know how to transform from the inside out. As a matter of fact, there is so much, so much incorrect information in the marketplace And 99% of the information out there that you and probably most people follow is all about how to go do something to get the outcomes that you want. Now, I want you to think back and I want you to look at your life. How many times have you tried to do something to get the outcomes that you want and you don't get the outcome? You might get a little bit of change, but for the most part, things don't change for you. See, change doesn't come through and by what you're doing. Change comes from who you're being, which is your unconscious identity. I want to speak about identity for a moment, and this podcast is going to be full of episodes on identity and and many, many things, because we're just going to scratch the surface as we're starting here, and I'm going to dig into a lot as we go through these episodes. Most people don't even understand identity, which is self-image, so most people never look at that. So let's say, for example, I'm going to just use a simple metaphor here or an analogy, is that let's say that you grew up poor and you grew up hearing that money's hard to come by. It doesn't grow on trees and you have to struggle for it and you've got to work hard and all this kind of stuff, you know, work till your eyeballs bleed and all this nonsense that a lot of Uh, a lot of internet personalities say. So let's say that that is your identity. That's who you are. That's how you show up in the world and that's what you do. Well, if you notice, it's going to be near impossible to create the outcome that you want because you're already working from an identity that sabotages you. That's why, and you know, a couple of episodes later here, we'll, we'll be talking about identity. That's why it's so vital that you shift your unconscious identity. So when you actually try to change your life from your current identity, that's a trap and that keeps most people stuck. All right. I need to be upfront here and very personal with you before we go any further. 
I am a recovering perfectionist. Anything that I would do in the past, whether it be video or audio or whatever, I was the kind of guy that always wanted it to be polished and wanted it to be, you know, really good editing and, and the sound good and everything else. And I'm going to tell you right now that that's not, of course, I want it to be professional, but I can't be that person and show up in these podcasts and make the impact that I want. I want these episodes to be literally like an old FDR fireside chat, literally me just talking to you. And that being said, I'm not going to actually, even though I have an editor, I'm not going to be doing a lot of extreme editing. I'm going to just be me, whether I misspeak or I use the wrong tense or I start up or I say something differently. This is just me and you talking because I know if I try to script it out and try to air quote, get it right, these episodes are never going to get out. So I just want to say that very early in our time together because that, <sighs> that frees me to be me, that frees me to actually interact with you and to let what needs to come through me come through me so that I can serve you. Okay, so right now in our time together, and thank you for letting me say that. So right now in our time together, what you understand is if you're like most people, you probably, you probably work backwards and you've been working backwards your entire lifetime. What that means is, is that you've been trying to do things to get the outcomes that you want. And if you look at your past history, that has not worked for you very well. Now, I want to say also, which we're going to talk about, I don't know, I think it's episode number three or four where I have it mapped out, is about your habits. We're not going to go into that now, but your habits, most people don't even know that habits come for the most part from the oldest part of the brain called the reptilian part of the brain. So anytime that you or anyone says, you know what, I want to change my mindset, which is psychological, they actually, what they're really saying is they want to change a habit, which is actually neurological. And if you're like most people, again, you have probably failed in changing your habits because you do not understand how the brain works. We'll get to that a little bit later on in our time together. All right, so you know that most people work backwards, and let me explain what that means. Most people work from what I call the have, do, be model. And by the way, I used to work this very same way. The have, do, be model is this. If I have or had something, then I could do something, and I could be something. An example would be if I have or I had the money then I could hire somebody to do my Facebook ads, or I could hire a personal trainer, or I could hire an integrator, or I could do something to grow my life or to change my life or my business if I have or I had the money. As I'm saying that, do you hear that in your own self-talk? Have you ever said that before? You know, if I had X, Y, Z, then I would go do, I would go do something different. Okay, so the have, do, be is if I have something or had then I could do. I could do something to create change in my, my life, and then I could be successful or healthy or trim or fit or a millionaire or whatever it is that you want to be. That is a broken model. And I don't even need to prove that if you look at your own life. And this is where most people work from. You know, I, I do transformational coaching programs and it's so interesting, the amount of people that won't even do something different to create different outcomes in their life. So what many people will say, and I know because I've done this a lot of years, is, well, you know what, Jim, I would get into your program. And by the way, I am not promoting anything on this podcast. I'm using this as an example. And I have been here myself in my own life, you know, a time in the past. So people will say, well, you know, Jim, if I, you know, if I had the money, I would register for your transformational coaching program and then I would do it. I would go through it and I would be successful. The reality is if you never have the money now, it's because something that you're not doing and something that you're not being, how do you expect to have the money later? Like I said, it's a broken model. And trust me when I say I used to be an expert at working that broken model. The way that you want to start working is what I call be, do, have. Be, do, have is who or how do I have to be to do the things that I choose to do to have the success that I want? You know, a great example would be, let's say, working out. So let's say that you want to get in the shape. And the biggest mistake that a lot of people make when they, when they start working out 
is they're waiting for the motivation first. You know, once I have the motivation to work out, then I'm going to go do it. But because I don't have the motivation, therefore I'm not going to do it. Well, let's talk about B. The way you must be first, which is a characteristic and way of being, is you must be committed. Because see, if you've ever worked out before, you might have noticed that, you know what, you just don't feel like it. You don't want to do it. You don't have the motivation. But you know what? You get committed and you start working out in week number three or so, your pants are fitting better or your your dress and you're looking in the mirror and you're like, wow, I'm starting to, you know, I'm starting to get some results here. And then what happens as a result of staying committed, now you're getting results. Now you are being motivated. And because you're being motivated, that fuels the entire process for you to continue to do what you need to do to have the body that you want. So it's obvious that most people, and probably you, have been working backwards. One of my coaches once said to me, he said, and he's, he's been a transformational coach for 40 years now, and he said that success, quite simply, is a matter of character. And character, obviously, is characteristics. So when you look at what you want to create in life, are you working from trying to do things, which is behavior, or are you working from being? Let me give you another example here. For many years, I worked with selling professionals all around the world, teaching neuropersuasion, subconscious persuasion, and influence. I don't even know how many selling professionals I've worked with. It's been a lot. And what most selling professionals will do is they will say, you know what, my pipeline is drawing up. And you know what? I don't have enough people in my pipeline and I've got to make some money. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go do something. I'm going to go network. I'm going to go prospect. I'm going to go lead generate. I'm going to go do something. That's the wrong place to start because very quickly, you know, they'll say on Monday, I'm going to start lead generating on Monday. And then by, you know, Thursday or Friday, they're back to their old behaviors again and old habits. And then Monday, a week later, they're really back to their old behaviors again. Can you relate to this? And if you can, it's because you're working backwards. What they never stop to ask themselves is who or how was I being that allowed me or allowed my pipeline to, you know, to dry up in the first place? Well, the ways that this person was being, and there are many ways, I don't know. I mean, it, it, every, everyone's different. They were being, you know, disorganized, uncommitted. And, and and many things, maybe, and the people use different words. Maybe lazy might be a word or unmotivated or unfocused or, or undriven. I don't know. And maybe some of these apply to you and maybe some of these don't. But we never, for the most part, look at who am I being and what ways was I being that created the outcomes that I didn't want. We generally look at what we did or didn't do, but generally also never attribute that to ways of being. So as I said, when we started this, most people, and I think you see that by now, they work backwards. You know, in in culture, in the world right now, in the social media sphere and social media world, and this has been around for a while, you see people, there's this one person in particular, he's very, very popular. And you know what? I mean, it's not my place to take away from anyone. Everyone's playing their role for whatever role they're playing. But he tells these people, you have to work until your eyeballs bleed. I've heard that before. And the reality is, is let's say, for example, when it comes to money consciousness, and let's say that you're being poor in your mind, let's say that your subconscious paradigms are about poverty, then how are you being? You are being in a place of low money consciousness. And then on the flip side, what many people do is they listen to this guy and they will go out and work until their eyeballs bleed and they will put in 70 hour, you know, 70 hour weeks and they'll spend time away from the kids and the husband and the wife and the family and they will work and work and work. Why? Because they're doing something. And the reality is, is they're not being the person they need to be at the unconscious level in terms of their characteristics to make what they're doing effective. You know, there's also, and I want to give him kudos, I'm not going to mention his name, and, and I, I do believe he does help people, but there's a guy that's very well known, if not the most well known person in the personal development industry. And he tells people, you've got to take massive action. And he's built his entire business on that. Well, that's a doing behavior. And let me show you how that's faulty. 
Let's say, for example, that you may go to one of his seminars and he says, you know what, you want to change your life, you've got to take massive action. And you think, well, okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. I, if I take massive action, I'm going to get massive results. There's a question here that's not being asked. And the question is, are you the kind of person that can sustain taking massive action? See, to sustain massive action, you must be self-integral. You must be committed. You must be 100% responsible. You must be focused. You must be driven. And so notice here that you can take ma massive action all day long. But if you're not being these characteristics, very quickly, the massive action wears off. And I am definitely not calling anyone an idiot, but you know, many of you have probably heard of Jim Rohn. He's called America's business philosopher. And Jim Rohn said a lot of years ago, he said that if you motivate an idiot, you've got nothing more than a motivated idiot. And, and myself, I, I have probably been there at some point in the past, but I'm telling you, what matters most is not what you do. What matters most is who you're being. See, people think that we have to do things, but what they never fully recognize is what you do is only as effective as you, the being, doing the, the, the doing. The being, doing, the doing. Let me re repeat that again. I stumbled a little, a little bit there. Is that what you do is only as effective as the being that you are. So consider that. So your massive action or your working out or your prospecting or your lead generation or your copywriting or your funnels or your business building or whatever it is, what you do is only as effective as who you are. I was at a, a multi-level marketing event several years ago. Um, I was, uh, it was a big event. There's probably 10,000 people there and, and I was one of the speakers. And the speaker before me, he was up on stage and he had everyone write down their goals for the next 12 months. And the event was in January and he said, everyone, I want you to write down your goals. And I just sat in the back of the room and I watched and all these people pulled out their paper and they were all excited and they're all setting their goals for, you know, the, the home and the double platinum level and the BMW and the Mercedes and, you know, to have this level and this in my downline and all, all this stuff. And I guarantee you right now, I guarantee you that 97 to 98% of those people never achieved those goals. And the reason why is they, they try to do things to get themselves to those goals instead of being someone. And not only that, those goals were inconsistent with their unconscious identity. And the first several podcasts, one of the episodes is going to be about identity. Identity is vital because identity is your destiny. And however you have learned, because you have been conditioned, we come to the world like John Locke said, the British philosopher, I believe he's British back in the 16 or 1700s. We come to the world tabula rasa, which is a blank slate. And you have learned your self image and you've learned your identity. And whatever that self image or identity is, I'm going to use this word in particular, you are trapped in that identity. Why? Because it's like a pair of glasses. When you have them on, you don't even know that you have them on. The same thing with your identity. Like this morning, for example, you did not wake up and say, well, hmm. You know, I wonder what identity I'm going to work through today. Well, yeah, let me, let me think about that. And to give you another example, this is what I know about you listening to this podcast. Part of your identity is progressive, meaning because most people that follow my information and you'll see as you're in, you know, you listen to my podcast, I go well beyond anything else out there in the marketplace, especially when we start talking about higher esoteric things. So what I know about you is that your identity is progressive. I know that people that follow me are generally what I call, you know, early adopters or ahead of the curve. And I know that your identity is in the personal development. The reason that I know that is because if that wasn't in your identity, you would not be doing what you're doing right now, which is listening to this podcast. So obviously you can see with that actually, that example right there, that analogy, you can see how identity works, but the same thing plays out in your life. All right, so let's keep going here. So at this MLM event, everyone, you know, is setting out their goals and all this. Have you ever asked yourself why goal setting doesn't work? Consider that 
You might even be thinking, what are you talking about? Everybody says you should set your goals. Well, yes, everyone says that you should set your goals, but here's why goal setting in and of itself is a broken process. Because most people set their goals for what they want at some point in the future from the person they're being now. And because they're setting their goals from the person they are being now, which means that's all they can do because that's who they're being and all that they do keeps them trapped where they are. Therefore, they're not going to be able to create what it is that they want to create later. And I'll say this a lot in our time together, but that's why you want to work actually from your goals and your vision, not to your goals and your vision, which is what most people do. I also want to say, once I get on the roll, um, uh, these are not scripted. Once I get on the roll, sometimes things just start coming through me and I'm like, wow, that's a pretty good piece of content. And I work from home now. So if I get on the roll and one of the dogs barks, you know, one of the dogs audio bombs me, I'm not cutting it out. So you may get to know my dogs as well. Okay. Now you may or may not know that I'm an NL NLP master practitioner. NLP is Neuro Linguistic Programming. It is a psychology that was created back in the 1970s by Richard Bandler and John Grinder. If you look up NLP online, you will find tons of stuff about NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. Back in the 50s, there was a guy named Gregory Bateson, a social psychologist, and he came up with a model of behavior that he called the logical level. Now, obviously, this is not visual, but I want to take you through this logical level. And as we're going through this, it's going to be absolutely obvious to you why you have not created what you want to create in life. What you may want to do also is if you're not driving, um, and if you're driving, definitely do not do this. If you're at home somewhere, if you're at the office, I want you to pull out a pencil and paper or pen and paper or whatever you use to draw. And I want you to draw a triangle, about a half a page in size, in front of you. We're going to go through this slowly. At the top of the triangle, I want you to write the word environment. Top of the triangle. And we're going to actually go down like a ladder because we're going to write things under that. I want you to write down the word environment. Then below that, I want you to write the word behavior. And if you're actually writing this, it'll be even more powerful because you can visually see what I'm explaining and sharing here. And then below behavior, like a ladder, again, stair steps, I want you to write the word skills. In NLP, they have two words there, skills and capabilities, but we'll just write skills. Then below that, I want you to write the word beliefs. Then below that, I want you to write the word identity. Now, something that I have not shared, and, and if you're listening, you may have been following me for a while, but you've never heard me say this. In the formal NLP model, below that, they have the word spirit or source, meaning the divine energy, the cosmic energy, the cosmic field, the God energy, the whatever, quantum dimension energy that comes through you because you are an energetic being. But what I want you, if you're looking at this and you wrote this out, what I want you to look at, I want you to go up to the word behavior which we started with environment and then behaviors. And I want you to circle that word behavior. And I want you to look at that because see, when you want to create change in your life, if you're like most people, that is where you start at the level of behavior. So let's use the example again of working out. January, beginning of the year, you look at the gym and everyone, everyone's in the gym working out in January. By the third week of January, I believe only 8% of people are left. Why? Because they're trying to do something, meaning getting in their car and going to the gym to create the outcomes that they want. They're trying to do something to get the outcome that they want. What no one ever thinks about is, okay, that's my behavior, but I want you to go down and I want you to circle identity. And I want you to look at that. What is the identity of the person working out? So let's say that the identity of the person working out, the identity is, you know what? I can't stick to anything. That's a characteristic they believe they have. And you can also circle beliefs. Their belief might be, I am a person, which is identity, who can't stick to anything. Well, how effective, if you look back up to the top of the pyramid, how effective is the behavior going to be when the belief in the identity is that I'm a person who can't stick to anything? 
Oh, let me explain here because I tend to get sidetracked a little bit. When we say environment at the top of the pyramid, that is your physical world, your physical body and the outcome that you are wanting to create. And if you're not getting the outcome that you want at the environment, it's not because of what you do, which is probably what you've been doing is trying to do things. It's all about who you are being at your identity level. Hopefully that's making sense at this point, because as I tell my students, that being and the way that you be is the genesis of what you create. How you're being will determine what you create. So let's take this over to your personal relationship, maybe a marriage. Now, let's say that your marriage or your relationship isn't where you want it to be. And I'm sure I'm going to do a podcast episode on this. Most people work backwards in their relationships. Um, and this is partly brain-based, but most people actually work in their relationship from a very selfish, selfish position. But if you look at your relationship and you're not getting the results that you want, what most people try to do is they try to do something to air quote, fix the relationship. The question that I'm asking you is what ways, what ways do you have to be and how do you have to be to show up your best in your personal relationships? Now, I, again, I'm going to do more episodes on this. I, I don't know if it's episode two or three where we're going to go into identity, but your identity determines your ways of being and your identity you learned before the age of eight. Socrates said something like this, and there's also a German psychologist, psychologist who said something similar, and he said, give me a child until the age of eight and I will own him for a lifetime. That is because we become who we are at a very early age. What happens is the analytical part of the brain is not developed in, a, in, a, in the way that it's supposed to actually work as, as, as adults. So for the most part, anything that is said to you as a child under the age of eight or so goes right to the unconscious mind because we cannot analyze until we're a little older. This is why if you see two little boys in the playground, they're five years old. One little boy that's five years old looks at the other and says, you're stupid. And the boy starts crying. But if you look at 12 year old little boys and one little boy says, you're stupid. The other kid says, I'm not stupid. You're stupid. Why? Because he could analyze what was said. So, and I'm going to take all this apart for you as you go through these podcasts and in our time together. I'm going to quite literally in our time together, help you transform your life by rebuilding you from the inside out podcast episode by podcast episode. But if we took, if we look at now that this pyramid, the formal name for that in NLP, it's called the logical level. Again, it was created by Gregory Bateson, a social psychologist. And back, back in the 1880s or so, there was a guy named James Allen, and he wrote a little book called As a Man Thinketh. And he said, mind is a master power that molds and makes. Man is mind and evermore he takes. He thinks in secret and it comes to pass that his environment is just his looking glass. So, your bank account, your body, your relationships, everything in your life is just your looking glass, and it's all created from your identity. So in this first episode, what I want you to look at and what I want you to get is that in order for you to transform your life, you can't go do things to do it. It doesn't work because your doing is only as effective as the being doing the doing. What you must do to create long-term personal change is to transform who you are in the inside. That's why this podcast is called Transform Your Life from the Inside Out. It's not go do be more blah, blah, blah. It's transformation. So we're going to have to start working on the inside. Now, I told you earlier that I'm going to go deeper than anything you've ever heard before. And my objective is for every podcast episode, there, to be, there is to be a big aha for you, a big takeaway. I want to actually just plant some seeds right now. I'm not going to dig into it. But the question is, is if you look at you, whatever your name is, you know, John or Bob or Sue or wherever you are in the world, and you look at yourself as a being and an identity, 
future podcast, I'm going to start asking you is, what is the truer essence of that identity? Who are you really? Where were you before you landed on this planet? You know, what cosmic waiting room were you in? Because see, Einstein called it the law of the conservation of energy and the law of the conservation of matter. We cannot destroy energy. Everything just changes form. Like if you have actually ice cubes in a glass of water, the ice cubes melt and you still have the same amount of content in that glass. Well, the same thing with you, according to Einstein, is that we do not die. We just transfer form. So that means that you were somewhere before you landed in this body that you're in. Now, again, I told you I go pretty deep and in some places I just I just go with it. And I'm not going to go too far here, but you know what I'm really asking you is if you dug deep and you really looked at your identity as a being, not a social being, but as a being on this planet, what is your identity? Let me give you a little, a little hint here. I was once on a podcast and I said, you know what? Many of you have probably heard before is that we are not human beings. First, we are spiritual beings having a human experience. What I tell people is that we are not spiritual beings having a human experience because see, even spirituality can be dogma. We are, and this is physics, we are cosmic, cosmic beings having a human experience. And it being a fact that you are a cosmic being, if you fully worked from that identity of being a cosmic being, because you are, what then would be possible for you? Okay, so that's a 30,000 foot question. Let's come back down the ground level. And the transformational takeaway that I want for you right now, and by the way, I'm sure you have a lot of questions and I'll get to that in just a moment. But the transformational takeaway that I have for you right now is a place that I suggest that you start working from is this question. What am I committed to and how or who do I have to be to achieve that? So let's go, let me give you an example. Let's go back to your relationship. Let's say that it's not where you want it to be and you're in a personal relationship. What most people do, as I said earlier, is they try to do something to make it better. What I want you and where I want you to start working from is who and how. Who and how in what ways, if I were being different ways, who and how do I have to be to get the peaceful and loving relationship that I want? So that's where you work from. Okay, so this wraps up the first module of the Transform Your Life from the Inside Out podcast. Now, stay tuned and keep listening because in the next episode, you're going to learn what your subconscious identity is and how it rules your entire life. You know, to give you an example of that, of how you work on identity and from your identity, not even knowing it, what toothpaste did you buy the last time you bought toothpaste? If you're like most people, you walked into the store and you bought Crest or Colgate or whatever it is that you've been buying for the past 10, 15, 20, 30, or 40 years. Why? Because that is part of your identity and we all operate within the context of our identity. So next week, you're going to start learning what the unconscious or the next module, the next, the next episode, you're going to learn what your unconscious identity is, where it came from, how it was created, and how you can start changing your subconscious identity. If you would like an accompanying PDF with this episode, then visit my website, jimforton.com, click on the podcast page, and download the PDF to this episode. Thank you for listening to this entire podcast. If you're the kind of person who likes to help others, then share this with your friends and family. You know, if you found value, they will too. So please share via your social media channels. Also, If you have questions, I'm here to assist. You can email me questions to support at jimforton.com and I may even use your question for a future podcast episode. Also, if you want transformational content like this daily, connect with me on Instagram. My Instagram name is I am Jim Forton. Finally, I do have a personal request. I believe that we're all here to help others and to grow and evolve ourselves. Together, you and I, let's help more people. If you would, please leave a review on iTunes and a good one, by the way, (laughs) I'd be grateful. And through your assistance together, we can transform more lives. Thanks for listening.